Oh, well, hello, Mr. Josh Kaplan. Hello. Uh, uh, that's nice to meet you. Uh, Pageant Report Bear here, back again for yet another interview with another member of the Power BI product team. This is Josh Kaplan, Principal Program Manager, and you work on analysis services, or what are you working on? Analysis services, Azure Analysis Services, Power BI Premium, oh. basically any enterprise service we have right now. Except Minus one. Oh, there you go. I was about to say. Any good one. <gasps> this interview is over. <laughs> I'm changing these questions. All right. <laughs> so uh, I have a few questions here that my listeners have been interested in learning more about the areas that you own and work in, and uh, we'll see how this goes, okay? Sounds good. All right, cool. So my first question, true or false, all the best PMs come from Philadelphia. True. Yep, exactly. Uh, fist bump. Nice, nice one. Okay, good. So, uh, second question, is multidimensional dead? <laughs> <laughs> Way to ease into that. <laughs> well, no. Pick you up and then, uh, it's still, uh, uh, the multidimensional product is obviously still very heavily used, still yeah. around SQL. Uh, we're still looking to bring it to the cloud. Uh, you know, we keep getting distracted by things like paginated reports, which sucks the resources out of the important things like multidimensional. Oh, you should have. Uh, did you watch Amir's interview? Because he had a very different opinion on that subject. Well, if I don't see it, it's not. It's not true. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I didn't know how that's how it worked, but okay, fine. Head in the sand, but yeah, I mean, we still we're, we're planning to to bring it to the to um, to the cloud. Um, just waiting for those resources to free up. It's still uh, obviously a big a big piece of our BI story, mm -hmm. and uh, we are doing some work currently, which you should probably see in a few weeks. Really, um, yeah. I say a few weeks, probably a few months now, okay. but um, around better performance with Power BI over multidimensional. So we've made uh, basically SuperDAX MD improvements to uh, multidimensional models. So when you use Power BI on top of there, um, it'll be a heck of a lot faster than it's been in the past. Oh, gotcha. So interesting, you know, I've if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I paginated report bear. I'm not the biggest fan of DAX, but MDX, which is what you use for multidimensional, mm -hmm. is also challenging. So actually, which language is easier to learn? MDX or DAX? I can give you my personal opinion. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, That's all I'm asking for. Yeah, so MDX, I always struggled with just because it looked like SQL, but did not work like SQL. Oh, that's an interesting <laughs> take on it. So that kind of always um, it drove me nuts when I tried to learn it. Um, and, you, know, you put something in a, in a where clause, and it's great. It performs great if it's one value that you're filtering on, but if you put two filter values on there, the perf goes sideways, and you have to rewrite it as a, as a member. Um, MDX, I always... Figured out how to use, but it was never um, never my favorite to learn. Um, DAX, uh, I, I, I picking that up, or I, I picked that up a lot easier, uh, more easily. And then if you're trying to do like, queries in DAX, like forgetting formulas for a minute and just trying to do uh, like return a table of data, summarize columns is all you need to know. So if you want to build a paginated report uh, that's based off a, um, a uh, table of data returned from a, from an AS model. Uh, summarize columns is really the only function you need to know. You put summarize columns, pick the columns you want to group by, pick your measures, and pick what you want to filter on, and it does the rest and just returns you the table data. It's still hard. And maybe for a bear. Yep. <laughs> okay, so uh, one of the things that I know you're very passionate about is uh, AGS in analysis services or in Power BI Premium. Can you explain why AGS is so important to our enterprise BI story? Well, AGS um, is part of, a, of just a bigger story of what you do when you have larger amounts of data. So traditionally, we've worked in two modes, import everything or import nothing. When you import nothing, we call that direct query mode, and we send queries all the way down to the, to the data source to run them. Um, obviously, from a data movement standpoint, leaving things in direct query is probably the easiest from that standpoint, um, but Power BI lets you do a lot, has a lot of flexibility in there, lets you put a lot of visuals on a single page, lets all those visuals interact with each other. Um, and even for a single user using a single report, you might end up with 30 queries every time they click. Um, that can, tends, to put a, tends to put a lot of load on uh, an underlying data store. Uh, and that's only one user. When you have more users and more users, and ideally if you're building a semantic model, you're going to have a lot of users using that model. The more users you put on there, um, even more load you're putting on that data warehouse. So mm -hmm. traditionally, instead of doing everything, doing the same types of queries, the same types of aggregations over and over and over again every time someone asks for it, you pre-compute some of that. You have it already ready. You do that hard work once, and then the stuff is ready 
when, some, when people want to come see it. And that's kind of what a cache is. Yep. So, like I said, in the past you had to cache everything. Now we have kind of a middle ground where you can cache the most common things. Mm -hmm. And by caching the most common things, you'll reduce the load you have on that underlying database. Um, which means for the uncommon things, the things that still need answers, um, there's a place for them to go, and that will be the, the underlying database, which won't be flooded with all the common queries anymore because those will be hitting cache. So you get kind of the best of both worlds there. Oh, cool. I didn't know that much about eggs, but that was really helpful. Thanks for explaining that to me. Anytime. I'll have to try that next time I use the desktop. Okay, so uh, so that's a feature that you used to light up in the context of Power BI desktop, right? Yep. Oh, so, so the feature that, or the tool that uh, AS authors have been using for quite some time was uh, SQL Server Data Tools. Mm -hmm. So what is the story around that going forward in Power BI for BI pros? SQL Server Data Tools, uh, yeah, like you said, the main tool for, for uh, AS, Azure AS. Mm -hmm. um, Tabular Editor has been gaining some good traction. Um, that's a third party? I, that's a, yeah, third party, non-Microsoft non tool um, built on that's top okay. of our APIs. That's okay. Yeah, very much okay. They, they do some nice things there. Uh, that's, like I said, been gaining some traction. But it's built on top of our APIs, just like even our internal tools like SSDT are built on top of our APIs. Um, you know, we are in the process of bringing all the AS functionality to Power BI. You kind of saw it with the XML endpoint uh, preview that went out already. It was taken back, though. Is that back? It's back. Okay. okay. It's taken back, but no one noticed unless someone points it out. I'm not saying anything about that. <laughs> it was taken back briefly. It is back. <laughs> it's back. Um, yes, no. Paginated Reports uses it heavily. So. Yes. Um, and so that would, that mostly targeted read write scenarios, mm -hmm. with the exception of um, you can connect SQL Profiler. And you may ask why is SQL Profiler a write event? It um, it creates a trace event, so that's why it's write. Oh, um, I actually didn't know that. That's interesting. But Profiler is supported in the current um, in the current preview. So we're trying to get every, all the tools to work against um, basically a Power BI workspace as if it was a Power BI Premium workspace as if it was an AS server. Um, and try to make it so it's kind of automatic. So all you need is the latest client libraries, and without any updates to the tools, it just works. Um, so we've got we've gotten coverage on on the read part of it, um, and we're working on the write pieces now. So once the the write preview comes out, um, the basically read write preview, tools like SSDT, mm -hmm. tabular editor, calling AMO directly, writing scripts, all that stuff will work automatically against the Power BI workspace again, as if it was an AS server. Oh, cool. All well, right. Well, that sounds interesting. I'm curious because there's a lot of people who use SSDT for RS as well. So there has to be a story for that around paginated reports and what we're doing for tooling there as well. So yeah, what is the story? Uh, well, that we'll, we'll address that in a future <laughs> interview. Yes, this isn't the, fo this isn't the focus. Of is it dead? Yeah, is SSDT RS dead? No, of course not. A lot of people use it. Okay, so uh, do you think you'll add a T-SQL head to analysis services in the future? That's one of my dream features. Doesn't get enough, does not get a lot of votes on the idea site. Um, that has always been one of my dream features for AS. Uh, obviously, DAX as a formula language uh, would you know, would still be there as a formula language. Uh, but as a way to que as a query language, a way to just get extract data, get data out. Uh, T-SQL is the best for that. Yes, and a lot of tools use it. Mm -hmm. A lot of legacy, to a, a lot of tools use it. Um, for the owner of multidimensional, you're throwing a lot of rocks here, pal. Yeah, throwing some back. <laughs> um, for a lot of tools out there, I mean, the SQL is just natural, and that would be one of the features I'd love to see at some point. Yeah, no, I, among a few others, but yeah, that's no, definitely no, on my list. There's definitely a lot of things, but you know, uh, for those watching the videos, you know, Pageant Report for a big fan of T-SQL, so that sounds like an interesting idea. Um, what do you think the future of premium looks like in Power BI in terms of you know the architecture and features and things like that that people can expect as they're managing these going mm -hmm. forward? Yeah, I mean, premium is in its infancy right now. Um, it's surprising to think about it that way, but yeah, you're right. It is only. Well, you think of multi-dimensional, which you keep bringing up. <laughs> yeah. Twenty plus twenty years now. Oh, um, that's right. That's right. You just said your twentieth anniversary. Twentieth birthday true. for all of AS. Yep. Um, not including the time to build it. So, uh, it, premium really isn't in its infancy right now, but it's gotten a lot of traction. Um, it opens up a ton of possibilities, and there's a ton more possibilities. And we're still kind of thinking. You know, the first round was all right, how do we get it out and uh, get existing Power BI scenarios to work on there, mm -hmm. which is what we've done. We've, we're, we've made some improvements to the management experience. There's still some more improvements we, we need, we're, we're making to the management improvement uh, management experience. Mm -hmm. um, but then we have to start taking it beyond um, you know, capabilities that you could do in Power BI today. Paginated reports is a good example. Things like uh, being on your own VNets, things like your own encryption. Um, you know, those are those are good starts, but still not uh, still not 
everything we can do to try to make to try to kind of grow what can be done in premium. You know, th things like larger models is something we're, we're, we're getting started working on. So you can go above those, those 10 gig limits that are kind of imposed today. Um, that reduces the need to sometimes have analysis services done in the picture. Um, things like being able to have you know, multi-node capacity. So right now you, you, you create these capacities and you assign workspaces to them. Well, if you could create a resource pool and you could assign all your workspaces to it and we would automatically manage which nodes they go to and balance the load for you. Um, like uh, a SaaS service is supposed to, right? Like a SaaS service, yes. like many SaaS services, but uh, you're right now you're buying a capacity. Yeah, and no, those no, capacities can I'm be. I'm just wondering, that's all. <laughs> yes. Uh, we, by the way, still have a service where you we do manage everything for that's you. True, when you that's pay true. That's true. Very popular one. Yep. It's missing one feature, but. Uh, yeah, when are we getting that? <laughs> uh, you need to watch the Amir interview ah, on that one. It was okay. covered in that in detail. Yeah. So be good to find out. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, th we're thinking about a lot of things for premium. Um, there are lots of different possibilities um, you know, as we take this into the future. Mm -hmm. yeah, things oh, that's that cool. Th that's that's really interesting. You know, will I be able to assign cores in the future to certain workloads like AI or I don't know mm -hmm. paginated reports? Anything's possible. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, maybe the feedback on those and help rank help us uh, prioritize those features. Yeah. Oh, you know, you've mentioned the backlog a few times, and you are the you manage the premium all up backlog. So I think you're the right person to ask. How come you're blocking paginated reports coming to lower SKUs? Oh, why would we want an alert here? <gasps> <coughs> uh, well, because a lot of customers well, it have a, a yeah. Yes, it will. Uh, I'm trying to give you a hard time. To what is a lower skew? It's not a P1. <laughs> uh, there are other SKUs that customers use and purchase that they'd like to see the patch reports capabilities on. So can we expect to see that move up your backlog <laughs> sooner in the future? You going to write some code? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever's necessary to get the job done. I, I know we want to bring uh, RS or RS. We have RS. Yes, that's true. We want to bring uh, paginated reports to uh, the lower SKUs, and mm -hmm. it's something that's already high on the backlog. Yes, I know. I'm and as people start to, to like free to up, higher, we'll get to that. To okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Um, hey, so when do I get a chance to interview for the open PM position on your team? Oh, you can do it now. Uh, uh oh, I wasn't really prepared, although I did dress for the occasion. And I'm also <laughs> wondering how come you got an open PM position, and that yet nobody will help the overworked PM on the paginated reports side. I heard their their PM does not work well with others. <laughs> <laughs> that is a low blow, sir, <laughs> for someone who's doing an interview with a stuffed bear. All right, so uh, final question. Uh, who will win a championship first, the Sixers or the Phillies? Jeez. Well, technically the Phillies already did. Well, I mean, next championship. Oh, wow. I mean, the so considering you, the <laughs> Eagles were Super Bowl champions just a year ago. 11 years is too long ago for a Phillies? Uh, <laughs> Jeez. Well, the Sixers... I don't have to go Phillies. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think it might be the Phillies. But hey, both teams have been playing really well. It was a tough loss for the Sixers. But uh, anyway, it was pretty hey, tough. This was Great great for the Phillies. Huh? The, uh, oh, uh, yes, exactly. So hey, thank you very much, Josh. This was really helpful and informative. I actually learned a, a number of new things, especially about AGS that I didn't know before. So that was really helpful. Thank you oh, very much for you, doing Bear. the interview. No. Paginated. Paginated Bear. Bear. Sorry, Mr. Bear. That's better than what Amir called me. So thank <laughs> you very much. So, all right. So thanks very much, everyone. This was great. Um, I'm doing an interview with Kim Manis later this week. And now I've got Arun officially booked and Adam Wilson as well. So uh, thanks very much for watching.